Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubble and crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is a place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Take us to get back to Silver Dollar City. I figure about four or five days of hard drive. We gotta get there quicker than that. Yeah, the festival's fun Saturday. Just getting over the Rockies will take two days in this thing. Here, pour some of this in the gas tank. Whoa, boy, hold on now. Granny, is that Mountain Dew? Yeah. And it do get you over the mountain. <laughs> it do melt the engine, too. Good. We don't want to miss the festival. Everybody and his dog will be at Silver Dollar City come Saturday. We'll make it. Is Ain't Pearl gonna meet us, Sire? How about that, boy? You heard from your mom? No. But maybe there's a letter in this morning's mail. I'll go to the box and say. Hey, wait a minute, Ellie, that's my letter. <laughs> it sure will be nice to see Cousin Pearl again and all the rest of the folks back home. Jim Owen, Mitch Ford, and the Hershans. I hear tell Pete Hershan had a baby. The way I hear it, it was his wife. <laughs> I guess that is pretty old, ain't it? That's older than both of us. I sure hope Jimmy Driftwood comes up from Timbo. Me too, Granny. I love to hear that rascal play the mouth bow. I bet they have a square dance that'll shake the hills. With old Chick Allen and the bald knobbers playing the music. Ah! Swing your foot, we're one all. Swing your foot, we're one the hall. Swing your foot, we're one the hall. From your mom? No, from the president. The president of what? The president of the whole country. You got a letter from Jeff Davis? Daddy, <laughs> I keep telling you, he ain't the president. <laughs> I don't get into that crap. Let me see, boy. My dog is his right, Granny. It says, uh, the president of the United States to Jethro Bodine greetings. What do you want with Jethro? He wants me to join the armed forces and fight for my country. Can I join too, Paul? Well, he didn't invite you. He just invited me. Well, I can fight better than you. You can neither. Uh -huh. I can too. Can't. 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 That's enough of that. Uh, according to this, Jethro, uh, you ain't got but a few days to report. Yeah, next Friday. Well, you'll be driving us to the festival next Friday. Now, you go in there, call the president, and tell him you're too busy. Now, wait. <laughs> if he was kind enough to send greetings and a personal invite, the boy ought to show up on time. Well, how are we going to get to Silver Dollar City? I'll call Miss Jane, have her put you and Ellie on the airplane. Why aren't you coming, Pop? I think I'd best stay and see Jethro gets into the Army proper. You mean Ellie and me ain't going to have no men folks to protect us? You don't need no protection. Jed. You forgot what kind of men come up from them hollers at festival time? Why, even a woman at my age ain't safe from them bold rascals. Why, they's liable to grab me and kiss me and... Let's go call Miss Jane. <laughs> She's likely to want to go with us. Jethro is joining the army? Well, he's received his induction notice. Well, don't worry. I've got some friends in the draft board. I'll call and use my influence. I'll make sure they take him. <laughs> In the first place, Jethro is anxious to serve his country. He's just trying to decide which branch of the service to apply for. I was in the quartermaster corps myself. Made sergeant. Ran a little lending service on the side. <laughs> you never saw combat, did you? Me? I went through some of the bloodiest fighting of the war. Got shot at a dozen times. But you never went overseas. When you lend money to soldiers at 40%, you don't have to. <laughs> Mr. Clampett. Howdy. 
Miss Jane, I put the women folks and the suitcases in your car. I sure do appreciate this. My pleasure, Mr. Clappin. Are you going back to the hills with them? Well, they did invite me, but it's really up to Mr. Drysdale. Oh, I'd love for her to go, but it would cost me $300 a week to replace her. $300? Is it my fault you do the work of four women? Certainly is. <laughs> so, Mr. Clappin, are you coming to the airport with us? Well, no, thank you. I got to talk money with Mr. Drysdale. Oh, yes. Well, you, you run along. <laughs> Well, going to deposit a little money, eh? You no, know, I'm going to draw some out. Oh, it's a beautiful drive to the airport. <laughs> I know it is, but I need some money for Jethro. Oh, I see a little pocket money for the soldier boy. Well, I'll take care of that. Now, let's see. His allowance is 50 cents a week, right? That's right, but I... And you want to give him a raise, reward him for his patriotism. That's a good idea. Let's show him how proud we are of him. We'll give him... Sixty cents a week. What I have in mind. Now, now, don't, don't overdo it. After all, the government pays his expenses and gives him a handsome salary besides. Yeah, I hear it tell it costs the government thirty-five or forty thousand dollars to train and equip each boy. Right. Of course, in Jethro's case, it'll cost more. They have to feed him. <laughs> Maybe fifty thousand to cover it? Oh, I think so. Okay, that's what I want to draw out. <laughs> <laughs> You told me that the government up in Washington was hurting for money and deep in debt. <laughs> yes, but... Well, I can't let the government pay for Jethro when I got all them millions just laying here in your bank. <laughs> but you just... You, you, people don't... You just can't. Hey, Jen! Well, that's Jethro back from the studio. He went over there to look at all the different uniforms. In here, boy. He figured that would help him decide which branch of the service to join. <laughs> How do you like it? It's a dandy iron hat. You get your cornered, you can butt your way out. <laughs> Jethro, that's the uniform of a Prussian field marshal. Hot dog! <laughs> if you show up at the induction center wearing that, they'll think... I, I like it. it. It's great. Now go right over. And when you walk in, give it this. <laughs> Tell them Bismarck sent you. I ain't decided on this one for sure. I got a whole bunch of other uniforms. Well, let's see them, boy. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, you wait right here now. Man, <laughs> Logan, look at them pistols. Ain't they something? Well, this is the kind of uniform old blood and guts wore. Who? General Patton. He's my hero. A fighting fool. Rode around in a great big old tank. How do you like it, Mr. Drysdale? Fine, fine. They'll put him right in Section 8. Is that good? A lot of men try for it. <laughs> Dandy. Looks like you're all set, boy. Oh, no, not until I get my tank. Oh, that's right. Uh, you better make that 100000 uh, <laughs> I said I ain't going to let the government pay Jethro's bill. Uh, go get yourself the best tank money can buy. <laughs> hey, what's he crying about? Sorry to see you go, all right? <laughs> well, how do you like? Not small, eh? It looks like you've got the run of the litter. <laughs> I think I'll start with this one. Then when I got the hang of him on the tank, give me one of them great big rascals. Great fair sized weapon on this little tank. Make it any goose gun. <laughs> yeah, that rascal. Really reach out and bring him down. What are you shooting at? Well, I couldn't buy no shells, but I got a hold of some blasting powder. Figure I'd muzzle odor and tamp in some rocks. <laughs> Don't shoot it around the neighborhood. These city folks is even jumpy about my squirrel gun. <laughs> Us tank generals drives mostly through fields and woods and such. I'd stay out of downtown Beverly Hills if I was you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Figured the best woods is up in Griffith Park. Ain't that where you played Robin Hood? Yes, sir. But I done outgrow that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, you got until Friday to practice driving and shooting. Well, I sure could use some help in there. Kate, how about you being my crew? I don't know nothing about them gadgets, boy. Well, you could be a Prussian field marshal. I got the uniforms right there in the tank. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'll call Mr. Drive, dear. Maybe he can help you find a crew. Okay. If the army finds out that Jethro is idiotic enough to impersonate a general, then they'll never take him. Right. Now go report to your commanding officer. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank for reporting for duty, sir. Well, Miss Jane, you're a woman. Thank you. Well, that's the nicest thing that's been said to me all day. What's the problem here? You having trouble with this soldier? You can be shot for disobeying a general. It ain't that. I can't have a woman in my tank. You want people to think I'm a nut? Certainly not. Then you be my crew. But I'm not in uniform. There's plenty of uniforms in the tank. You can be a Prussian field marshal. Now, come on, hop in. I'm not going. Are you disobeying a general? <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's just a short trip. That's what you think. We's going to Griffith Park. Oh, sure, sure. Just make a right turn as you go through the gate. We ain't going through the gate. We's going out the back way and cut across country. Oh, <laughs> general, I mean general. What? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You and the field marshal have a nice trip. <laughs> A little machine, eh? Yes. Hello? Yes, ma'am, this is Jed Clamp. Long distance? Pearl, how are you? Granny and Ella may get there all right? Yeah, cousin. Yeah, cousin Jed. The Queen was just fixing to leave for the festival. <laughs> I sure wish you and Jethro was here. Me too, Pearl, but I reckon Granny told you about Jethro. Yeah. She says Jethro's been offered a job by the government. <laughs> no, she didn't say what kind of job. But... Just a minute, Jed. Alberta Bradshaw, you get off this line. I know you're there. I hear you breathing. <laughs> And I ain't gonna have you blabbing to everybody in these hills who I'm talking to, so hang up. <laughs> After all, what I got to say to my rich cousin, Jed in California, who lives in a mansion in Beverly Hills and has $70 million in the bank and just got back from his castle in England where he's known as the Earl of Clampett, <laughs> is none of your business. <laughs> well, now, Pearl, uh, get back to Jethro. Oh. Yeah, Jed. I want to hear all about that fine government job my big, handsome son with the sixth grade Beverly Hills education is going to... Bernard Bradshaw, that is the rudest thing I ever heard tell of. What'd you do, Pearl? She hung up. <laughs> Pearl, the men are screaming by your house on the way to the festival. I'm talking to Cousin Jade on the telephone. Oh, Pearl, they're coming up out of the house. To the same fella. Yes, sir. They're fighting out front. I best go help the loser. Who's losing? Mr. McKeegan. <laughs> All right, honey, you all have a good time now. And tell Pearl not to worry about Jethro. He's doing just fine. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Well, let's see you follow me across the lake. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll get you for this, you Prussian dog! <laughs> that got you and Tony split up. These wild reports from Griffith Park, like seeing Robin Hood. But we saw him, Charlie. I swear it. Just like you see these tank tracks, huh? Yeah. Well, that could be a bulldozer. They're cutting fire roads all over here. But the park ranger said he saw the tank. Get me that clown on the horn. <laughs> I'm out talk to him. You know, they shouldn't leave those fellas alone up in those towers for so long. <laughs> Gets to him. Okay, Charlie, you're patched into the Ranger. Thanks. Hi. How are you? <laughs> say, about the report. What's that you say you're looking at? A man in uniform, in a, in a small boat, crossing the water, about to be shot at. <laughs> Tell me, is General Washington standing up, or is he... Oh, oh, a German field marshal <laughs> in the boat. Looks like von Hindenburg. <laughs> Tell me, isn't your tower quite a long distance from the lake? Oh, you've got your glasses. Uh, what's in the glasses? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, no, no offense. Now, tell me more about the tank you claim you saw. Oh, that's what's just about to shoot at von Hindenburg. I, I, I didn't get that. Well, who's driving the tank? General... <laughs> and now he's putting mud and rocks into the barrel of the gun and tamping him down with a broomstick. I see. <laughs> now, now, look, you, you just sit tight and we're going to have you airlifted out of there. <laughs> Man, he has really gone eight. <laughs> he was right about Robin Hood. Oh, come on, Fred. Von Hindenburg in a boat, General Patton in a tank, getting ready to shoot at him. <laughs> Let's get an air medic in a helicopter and... I did it! Come it on! Come it on! The one that Patton carried pistols. Shooting that cannon off is murder. Okay. Now, you see that stump across the lake down by the water there? Yes. Well, that's your target. My target? I'm not going to shoot this thing. Are you fixing to desert again? No, no, no. Okay. Well, then you get in there and button up. I'm going to get in the boat, row across the lake, and see how good you do. Yeah, you do that. Clear across. Then hide behind some trees. <laughs> Where? Right through those trees. My golly, it is a tank. Come on. <laughs> it's von Hindenburg. Huh? Guten Tag, Herr Field Marshal. <laughs> All right, come on out. Come and see out, schnell. <laughs> Come and see here, Herr Hindenburg. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Hindenburg. Hey, that's the nut was playing Robin Hood. Really? Yeah. And he, he'll claim that he's president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Don't let this uniform fool you. I'm president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah, und ich bin Kaiser Wilhelm. Was gibt es Neues? I'll show you. Hey, Charlie, where did you learn to spreck in the Deutsch? I was parachuted behind the German lines, was captured, and spent six months in a prison camp. I thought you were in the Quartermaster Corps. I was, but I had to transfer to the paratroops for more pay. How come? Well, I borrowed a couple of hundred bucks from this Quartermaster Sergeant. 
That Shylock charged me 40% interest compounded semi-daily. <laughs> semi-daily? Uh, he had his hooks in me, but good. Hounded me day and night. <laughs> See, fellas, I'm not von Hindenburg. In fact, I'm an ex-GI, a veteran. Really? I was a sergeant in the Quartermaster Corps. Hey, I was in the Quartermaster Corps. <laughs> well, I was at Fort MacArthur. I was at Fort MacArthur, too. How about that? Yeah. I borrowed some money from a sergeant called Dracula Drysdale. <laughs> you did? Uh, looked a lot like you. I don't believe I caught your name. Von Hindenburg, I've been hiding in Argentina for 50 years. <laughs> Yet. My crew deserted me. I'm going to turn this thing in and get the truck back. You can drop me off at the sheriff? Oh, sure. Come on, hop in. I got to take $2,500. Well, what for? Well, $500 is for Mr. Drysdale's bail. And $2,000 is what he owes. Boy, I ought to shoot that Mr. Drysdale. Well, if we don't get this money down there, there's a fellow named Charlie going to do it for you. <laughs> Time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now. Here. Yeah.